All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to the DScope Zero to Auth in an hour or less workshop. So my name is Chris Carper, and I'm a DevRel engineer here at DScope. And uh, we're going to kind of go over an end-to-end -end, uh, implementation of adding DScope to your application um, using passwordless authentication types of OTP, as well as social logging using Google. Um, DScope, if you aren't super familiar, is a authentication tool that is enabling developers to implement authentication within their applications very seamlessly, almost no code at all, um, and very focused on the drag and drop authentication. So you can add um, different authentication methods whenever you'd like without changing your application code. Um, so with that, we'll kind of get started and jump in. So a little bit about myself. I'm Chris Carper. I uh, have been with Disco for a while now and worked with the team even longer. Um, I'm located in Dallas, Texas, and I enjoy working on cars and doing some like fun stuff with cars. I'm a big car nerd, Audi and Volkswagen stuff. But uh, so that's me and I travel a lot with my wife and my kids. So that's kind of what I'm into. So today we're gonna to kind of cover some of the core authentication concepts and also um, code and authentication for Node. And we're gonna use Node.js and React to um, build out authentication within a sample application. Um, we kind of, understand that most people are going to have some sort of code uh, understanding of React, Node, and Express, and you'll need a GitHub account to clone the repo. And then you can use an IDE of your choice. I'll be using Visual Studio Code. There is an issue with Node 20 um, with some of this. So if you can, we're going to be using Node 18 today. Um, because there's an issue with Node 20 with some of the TypeScript stuff. So we'll get started here. We're going to cover what is authentication. And authentication is the process of verifying someone's identity. It can be a user, a system, or a device. So like if you're doing um, biometrics, you can kind of verify based on the device or YubiKey. Um, then like system, machine to machine, be it like access tokens or something like that. Um, it's an essential aspect of security and we use it to protect from unauthorized access to applications, uh, making sure that the user is who they are. And it's uh, very crucial to implement authentication properly in order to protect yourselves from um, like attackers or like duping kind of stuff. So um, that's kind of what is authentication. And we're going to kind of cover the application um, authentication steps. So essentially, the user comes to a browser, provides credentials, sends to the server, the server validates the credentials, and then returns the token as a cookie. Um, then the browser stores that cookie and then sends the token and subsequent request to the server to get further data back. Um, so you basically have like the client side and then the back end side, the client side is doing the rendering, the back end side is going to be doing like the session validation and stuff like that. So here we're going to um, be building out an application and this is kind of the flow we're going to be building out. So you are the user or your clients are the user. We're going to be using a desktop browser for this implementation today. And then essentially it's going to talk to your application, which then is going to talk to the authentication service, which is Disco. So um, as we get started, we're going to log in with um, Dscope and sign up for Dscope and then kind of step through the implementation of adding Dscope to your, your application. So uh, Abby has shared 
the steps within the webinar chat to do the clone. So we're going to basically clone it and then check out a specific branch. And then there's a couple NPM items that we're going to need to do as well. So we'll cover that as we go. But uh, to get us started, we're going to sign up for DScope. So we're going to go to dscope.com and we're going to click sign up. We're going to sign up with our email address. Then we're going to get an OTP code. Uh, perfect. So this is what DScope looks like when you first sign up for it. Um, you can build out your flows, kind of poke at things, but the best way to get going is using the getting started wizard. So for us today, I'm going to select consumers, but uh, we do support business to business and multi-tenant. Um, so if you're kind of doing business to business, um, you'd select this route, but for today we're going to go with consumers. So as you step through this, um, you can kind of see the different off methods that are supported here. Um, and you get to pick them as you go and that helps build out your flows. So for today, we're going to use social off and uh, one-time password as our primary um, login methods. And then we're also going to be able to select a multi-factor. And I'm going to go with uh, magic link. And so here you get a couple samples of what you can do with your flows. So like this one here, this is going to be uh, OTP sign up or magic link. And then you've got uh, your Google or Microsoft. These are just like outlines. You can always edit these later. I'm going to go with this one for today. And so here it's basically displaying some info about the different kinds of sign in flows and sign up flows. And again, showing you the example. But when we click next, it's going to build out the flows. So here we're on a page where we can actually test it. So um, you get a couple snippets here on the left hand side, and then you've got the test pane on the right side. You can also select the different um, flows to play with those as well. But we'll step through this um, example here. But on the left hand side, if you're using React or um, Web Component, you automatically get these two kind of snippets here. And we'll be using this um, within our application today. But then you also have some snippets on the back end as well. Um, we have deeper documentation on all these items on our doc site too, which we'll be using. But uh, just as an example, today we'll use uh, sign up with Google. We'll sign in here. And then do some two factor on a phone. Gets our information. Okay. We're going to do OTP on the phone as well. All right, so now that we've stepped through the authentication, um, we're going to receive the authentication response in the session jot. So here you can see on the response, you get the session jot and the refresh jot. Um, so the session jot contains like all of the information for the users like uh, sessions. So you've got like expiration and stuff like that. You can add custom claims to this. And also, if the user has like roles or tenants um, applied to them, then that's also in the session job. But 
the auth response is going to contain more information about the user and whether things are verified, their different external IDs, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of the flow there. So now we're going to kind of jump into the flow a little bit more, and then we'll kind of go and look at uh, implementing this within our application as well. So this is the out of the box flow. So, or yes, this is the flow that's built based off of our input from the getting started wizard. So you can see it kind of starts here, goes to the welcome screen, and then kind of goes through as well and adds more information. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this, and I'm going to remove the continue with Microsoft. And so all of this is completely editable. Um, like you can change the size of things, select whether it's fill container or not. And um, you can also like remove things, add things, that kind of thing. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it like this for now. And then we'll add some more items. So, but again, like complementing the drag and drop authentication. So like if we ever want to add a different auth method here, we can drag and drop it, edit the text, And then once we save it, our application is automatically updated. So just for instance, let's save this here and go back over to our getting started wizard. We see it's updated here. And if we look at our example application, isn't loading but we'll play with that too in our app today when we build it out so we'll go back here and we're going to edit this screen again and we're going to remove that continue with linkedin we're going to save that so currently we've got uh the continue hitting magic link i actually want to change that to be um OTP. So let's delete these items. And then this is the OAuth flow. Let's double check. Then it's also doing is email verified. It's doing the two factor auth by default. So um, let's be at SMS. But let's go ahead and add the OTP via email instead of. Uh, instead of magic link so here it's it's already at the top but you can search this so if like i wanted to add custom claims i could search for that but since we're going to do otp email um, we're going to do sign up or in so it brings in the multiple items that you need automatically and they're all connected so if we connect the continue which means like once you give the email address click continue, you're then gonna get an OTP via email. And then we can go ahead and connect this too, down to the, is this a new user? Steps through like the risk calculator and everything else as well. Um, so that's kind of that flow there. We can then have it make itself pretty. So it's a little bit easier to see. And again, we've got the uh, continue with OTP. And then you also have the social login via Google. Um, and as we kind of step through again, you, is it a new user? Is the email verified? And then it goes through and verifies um, the OTP for SMS and such, and then eventually ends the flow. And that's when you get the uh, authentication response and the user's job. So now that we've got the flow, um, we can kind of poke around briefly within the UI, like the different auth methods are configurable here. Again, the styling, like of the flow, you can change the different uh, items here. So if we wanted to do something like uh, this, we can save this and then we'll see when we use our application um, that these colors are connected there as well. You can see your users here. So like I created this user. Um, 
us now. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So we step through that flow again when we add, add the scope to our application. Um, and then we also have like access keys, tenants, um, different roles and permissions kind of thing. So a bunch of uh, items here. Um, if you've got questions on the like UI, let us know in the chat, but we also document all this within our doc site as well. Um, so I want to focus today on kind of adding off to an application. <clears throat> so we're going to start with kind of this uh, snippet here, and we're also going to utilize our documentation page. So if you go to docs.dscope.com, we're going to be looking at the getting started page because we're going to be working with flows today. And so we're, we're using React and then Node.js. So you can see the Node.js side for um, validating the session for the back end, but we're really going to be focused on the app side today. Um, React is already selected here. So we're going to get going with this. Um, so again, this is our application, uh, just showing you kind of where things are. Um, and at, uh, to reiterate, you got to do a git clone on the sample app, and that's in the chat too. So I'll go ahead and add it here um, just so you can see it um, as a comment. And then after that, you're going to want to do a git checkout unfinished. And then npm i. And then we're also going to want to install the Apex charts. And then link type script. So these are kind of the steps that we're going to do. But I want to show you kind of where things are. So you've got your client and your server uh, directories underneath of here. Underneath of source, we're going to edit the source for the client. We're going to edit the app.jsx file, the signin.jsx file, which is under off sign in. And then we're also going to edit the nav bar, which is under components, headers, uh, nav bar here, and then we're also going to edit the dashboard.jsx, and then we're also going to edit the uh, server side and add some authentication middleware here as well within the index.ts. So um, with that, we'll kind of get started. I'm going to go ahead and step through the installation of npm i. All right, I'm going to install the Apex charts and then link type script. Make sure that we can run the server. Looks good. So npm run server to run the server and then npm run client to run the client. Take a second and open up. Perfect. All right, so now we have our application and here like you've got your dashboards. Currently there's no authentication at all. Um, so it's all open. Uh, we do have a login like uh, button there, but nothing's there yet because we've not added it. So uh, let's go ahead and add authentication here. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to close this uh, just to make sure we don't have any issues when we open it back up. I'm going to go ahead and stop the client. We're going to start in the app.jsx. Um, we're going to need to. We're going to need to uh, copy a couple pieces in here, so we're going to want to do the import. So let's go ahead and copy this from our docs page. And within the app.jsx, we really just need the auth provider here. Um, and then if we go back over to the dscope console, we see that we've got the auth provider with our project ID. Um, we're going to go ahead and copy that piece here. And we're going to wrap our application um, with that auth provider, similar to how you can see we have this done within 
the uh, docs. So under here, we copied this piece out of the UI. Pop this here. All right, so we've got our auth provider wrapped in here. And then let's go ahead and add the authentication um, here as well. So this is gonna be within our sign-in page. This is where we're gonna host our flow for the authentication. So let's uh, go ahead and copy in this piece here. So we can import Dscope. And then if we come back over here, we can copy this piece out as well um, and add it here. So we can format this a little bit as well, um, make sure that it's nice and pretty. We're gonna go ahead and put this in a row. So we're gonna actually move this up here. and then add it in a little bit. So we're gonna actually use the on success. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this a little bit here um, because we just want to redirect the on success, which is gonna, which is gonna take us to the signed in page or the home page with auth enabled. So now that we've had this here, let's go ahead and give it a try. So we've not added middleware yet. So we're going to um, still be able to see everything, but we'll add that shortly. So like I said, you can still see everything. However, uh, now when we go to the login, we have um, our flow here. And as discussed, you can make this prettier, change it. Um, this is very simple just for this demo like workshop. So let's go ahead and myself, I'm going to go ahead and do OTP this time. And I got my OTP code. Another one for mobile. Five one eight. Perfect. All right, now we're logged in. So if we look at our console, we're going to see. Well, actually, it's, let's look at the application there. So if we look under local storage, we've got the DS and then the DSR. The DS is going to be our session jot. Um, and then the DSR is going to be our refresh jot. So we can look here, we go to jot.io and open it up. You can see like the expiration and everything. So this is the information that's responded uh, within that session jot. So now we've added the authentication and we've only edited two files. So we wrapped our app with the auth provider and then we pulled in the flow um, and we now have authentication. But let's go ahead and add a few more pieces. So let's, let's add a logout um, within the nav bar. So here we've got a logout popover and a login popover. Um, so here I'm gonna go ahead and change this a little bit. So we want to use um, the is authenticated. So we want to use the is authenticated and we also want to use the use session. So we're going to copy this over and import it here. So we just need use session. All right, so then let's go ahead and we just really want is authenticated. We don't need is loading. So here we can copy over from the docs and say uh, is authenticated based on the use session. 
And then we're going to come down a little bit further. And here's our login popover. So before our login popover, we're going to want to make sure that it's authenticated. So we can copy this section here on the doc sit page to kind of wrap this popover. Um, and then we're going to close that out bit further down. So after the popover, so this is our login popover. And we got that there. Then this is basically going to show the login if the user is not authenticated. Now let's go ahead and copy this and let's change it to the log out popover when the user is authenticated. So we've got that there. You can save it. Um, I won't demo that yet. We'll demo that when we add a little bit more to it. So let's go ahead and add authentication to our dashboard. So this, um, I'll go ahead and start it back up one more time. So these are our dashboards. So we want to basically um, protect this data by authentication. And so here I'm still logged in because it's kept my session token. Um, so now I do get the log out um, and then it takes me back to the sign in page. So um, we're going to go back and add auth or rather uh, protection uh, here based on our authentication. So if we go to the dashboard.jsx, we're going to want to use the get session token as well as the use session. So within uh, dscope react component, we also have the use or the get session token. So we can go ahead and import this. We're going to want use session. And we also want get session token. Okay, let's go ahead and close this out. So it's less, um, less much. All right, so let's go ahead and add this off here. So we're going to be looking at the uh, Git API data. So we're going to want to basically protect this piece. Um, so we're going to kind of add a couple things. So we're going to want the uh, is authenticated here as well. So before the Git API, we can kind of implement that Git um, that is authenticated. And then we can also do uh, the session token. So if we get the session token, which is gonna be like in the verification kind of area of the docs. But if we do const session token equals get session token, this is gonna return the session token from the uh, SDK. So we're also going to want to change the bearer format then. We're going to do dollar sign session token. And then down here, I also want to verify the authentication piece too. So we're going to get is authenticated. And then we can save this. And we will then be restricting that a little bit more. But before we demo that, let's also add our middleware here as well. So within the index.ts, um, which is going to be on the server directory uh, within the file structure, we're going to add some middleware here. So uh, we're going to want to import uh, two things we're going to want to do the import dscope client from dscope node SDK. And then we're also going to want to import uh, git token from auth helpers, which automatically completes. So this is a file within the directory structure that uh, contains the Helpers, basically. 
So let's look over here. Again, this kind of shows how we did it as well. So the import dscope client from the node SDK, and then this is the initialization. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do this initialization here as well. Um, we can actually just copy this over. And we can go ahead and do this underneath the globals. So we've got that there. And then um, we're going to want to update our project ID. So this is uh, this is actually right. So this is right. I, uh, I'm logged into the right one. So when you copy and paste from the uh, docs section, it's going to auto populate your project ID. But if you ever need to find that, it's uh, underneath the project. And if we go to full screen, you can see it ends with DFC, which is the one we're using here, but you can copy it as well. Um, so we have the right one there. And then um, we're going to want to build an off middleware section. So we can do that here. Build this out a little bit further. Yes. It's going to be async. And then if I can type, that'd be lovely today. But uh, we're going to want to capture the request. And then the response. A little bit more here. We're going to do try. Oh, that's a disk of client dot validate session. Okay. I'll go ahead and take this out of the try catch just for now. Okay, so then we've got that piece there. Then we can go ahead and do a catch E. All right, so basically, if it's a 401, then we're going to say that the uh, user is not authorized. So this looks good. Now we can do a return within that catch. Otherwise, we need this. All right, so let's look here at where we're going to implement that. Um, let's see. We can implement this here within our express router. Router. All right, so we're going to actually put this down here at the bottom. So we currently have the router. Where's the cons router? There we go. So we've got the cons router. So we're going to have the router use the off the way. All right, so let's go ahead and restart our server. 
Perfect, service running. We'll start the client. Perfect. I'm gonna start a new incognito window. There we go, local host 3000. And now we're gonna get an unauthorized and it's gonna kind of um, redirect us to the sign-in page after a couple seconds. Yeah, so here we go. We're back on the sign-in page. If we go back here, we see, I must have just grabbed that and the dashboards here are in the nav bar. Uh, Log out, pop over. So something's a little off there. Um, Anyways, we're going to go ahead and go to the sign-in page. So we can do that by going to one of these guys. Unless Scott must have picked up my session token. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close out this incognito window too. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up the new incognito window. And we'll go to local host. Here we can then come over bell for tools. Now there's nothing here. So we know that we're not signed in and login is right because it doesn't have our, um, have my idea still stored. So we got that there. So let's go ahead and sign in um, with OTP first, continue. And then Let's get the OTP here. And since this user already exists, it's not going to ask me for OTP for SMS as well. So um, now we've got our dashboards and everything, and we can see this data. We're logged in. We got um, our session token is loaded and everything here as well. Um, so we've got all that stuff there. So that's good. Let's test the logout too. So if we log out and then let's try and log back in here. So yeah, so it successfully logged us out so we can log in. And here, let's go ahead and use um, Google. Um, but one thing I want to look at really quickly is um, let's go back to Let's go back to um, let's go back to the console really quick. So we're gonna go to yeah, dot scope. So let's see. Well, again with email. I'll go ahead and do the magic link. Do we enchant the link? Perfect. All right, cool. So now we're here and let's look at this user. So um, let's see, login ID, edit. Yeah, so there's just one login ID on this user. So since uh, we've got um, this email address is valid, we're gonna sign in with Google and it's actually going to apply a second um, login ID to it, which is pretty cool. So it's gonna, it's gonna trust the email since it's verified. And then it's going to basically merge the users. So you can sign in with either your email or your Google account. Um, so underneath the, the social logins, you kind of have this option and it says merge user based on returned email address from the provider. Um, so this is basically trusting Google that the email is verified, which is cool. All right, so let's go ahead and try that. We'll go ahead and log in. Do back stop here. Perfect. And now we're logged in with social login. 
Um, so that's good to go. Um, now, if we look back at the user, let's make this a little bit bigger. You've got your comma here. So you've got two login IDs, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's, that's basically how to implement uh, these scope flows within your application. Um, very, very straightforward. And we can also always go back and edit um, our flow here. So currently, if we log out, we're here on the uh, sign-in screen. Let's say we want to add something. So let's say we want to add, um, let's do LinkedIn. Say we want to sign in with LinkedIn. LinkedIn, so continue with LinkedIn. All right, so there we go. Now we've got this guy, and it's still going to go down the same path as OAuth. Let's just go ahead and save that. Uh, let's double check. Let's here. Yeah, probably just something with my uh, incognito browser. Let's go ahead and add that there. Sign in. Go ahead and make this. Okay. So like I said, it's still going to go down the same path because it's still OAuth. Save the flow. Let's double check the auth method. So if we look over at uh, LinkedIn, so these are all enabled. This is enabled and it's going to merge based on the account provided. So now if we uh, do a refresh here, we can now continue with LinkedIn. So it's going to ask us for our info. And since this is a different email address, it's going to um, it's going to not merge it. So let's look here. All right, it's going to send me two factor from LinkedIn. Cool. So I'm going to allow it to sync up with DScope. And that's going to ask me for here. Perfect. All right. And now I'm logged in. Um, so since it's a different email address, it didn't merge. Um, and we have the email and the LinkedIn uh, kind of identifiers. So again, no code change, updated that flow and uh, added another auth method and everything was good to go. So uh, with that, we've added um, these scope flows to a simple React and Node implementation um, using React front-end and Node back-end to do the session validation for us. So we can open this up to questions if anybody has any questions. And uh, we can step through a couple examples as well if anybody has any specific examples they'd like to see. All right. Somebody asked about adding uh, SSO within how to add SSO with Okta to their DScope flows. So yeah, it's it's super straightforward, and we also have um, a document on this. Um, so here, if we go to our knowledge base and under SSO, you can see that we've got a document here for adding SSO to a tenant. Um, very straightforward. Um, we've got uh, like basically step through, make sure that it's enabled, and then you're going to want to create your tenant and then kind of set up the uh, SSO data. Um, so you're going to want to get like the metadata URL or the individual pieces and kind of set that up from there. So it's 
pretty straightforward. I think you can probably knock that out within like 15 minutes or so um, if you're handy in Okta. So, um, but yeah, so that's uh, again, right on the docs page. We've got our knowledge base items as well. And I'll kind of drop this here on the answer too. So, perfect. Uh, so using the authentication flow concept without using dscope as my idp so um we can do that um we're gonna want to do that utilizing oidc let me get that um let me get that article link So let's double check the blog. We might not have uh, published that just yet. So resources blog. Yeah. Yeah, no, we currently don't have that for the OIDC um, released on the blog or in the docs, but should be next week. Um, but you can you can utilize um, SAML um, to kind of utilize uh, your own IDP as well. So um, you can use Okta or whatever to kind of uh, do that identity provisioning for you as well. So, but uh, look back next week, uh, we'll have some more stuff on the OIDC side as well. All right. Can I just use my own OAuth application? So yeah, you can. Um, that's gonna be... Custom social login. So currently, like when you use your own OAuth application, it's going to kind of show you that you're using dscopes. Um, so this guide here is going to walk through, um, and I'll put this in the question and response. This guide walks through like requesting the CNAME update and then how to update the Google app as well. So this is an example for uh, using your own application for Google's OAuth flow. So basically you go into Google, make the configuration changes you need to, and then um, you'll eventually come back to the dscope side and configure that here. So they will go underneath of auth methods and then under OAuth, Google, then you'll say, use my own account. And you'll fill in this detail, which is covered um, underneath of this as well. So, but uh, no more questions. I think uh, we're pretty good to wrap up and um, definitely appreciate everybody's time and joining this webinar today and uh, feel free to reach out with us any questions that you might have um, always feel free to join the uh, dscope off town so if you look under uh, resources community off town you can join the slack community as well um, to kind of get in touch with us uh, within the console too you have this little pop up here on the bottom left, um, which since we're an incognito, it's probably not going to work, but I'll show you here. So you've got the pop up here that you can get in contact with us as well uh, via dev rep. So, uh, but feel free to get in contact with us and ask any questions you might have, but uh, definitely appreciate everybody's time and have a great day.